Welcome back to another episode of the Um So Podcast. This week, special guest and a former teammate of mine, Muna Lee. Muna is a two-time Olympian. She's a track and field athlete. She's now coaching in Kansas City. And uh, we catch up on a bunch of stuff from the past. And uh, you always, you know, Muna Muna's a, a track coach. And I forget that not everyone operates in the podcast and, and social media world as, as fluently as uh, some, of, some of the rest of us do. And so... Little little bit of awkwardness trying to get the ball rolling at the beginning of the podcast, but she's awesome, and I, I thank her a ton for coming on. So really stoked to keep in touch with people that I used to used to be teammates with. But we got a couple sponsors before we dive into this. We have PowerDot. If you're not familiar with PowerDot, you should be. PowerDot is a smart muscle stim unit. It's one of my favorite tools I have for recovery. Uh, it's also great for pain relief. Um, it's, it's a smart muscle stim. If you've ever used like a muscle stim unit and rehab or any of that type of stuff, it's going to work the same as your kind of high dollar muscle stim units that your physical therapist may have. Um, but it's going to be small, compact enough. It's about the size of a Sony Discman, if you're curious of the size of like your entire carrying case. And so that's got like two units, two pads, uh, you know, two setups. And this whole thing can just go in your bag so easily and you control it all from an app on your phone. It tracks everything. It tells you when to reorder pads. It shows you where to stick them. It's really great. And you can control almost every single thing independently. Ooh, geez, big all yawn. Anyway, check out powerdot.com. Use code UMSO and save yourself 15% on checkout. We also have hybrid performance method. So some of you have been noticing I'm over here getting, getting lean, being muscular. And, uh, well, that's because I've been working with hybrid performance method. Uh, they've been doing my nutrition now for about the last eight months and, uh, working with coach Greg Sutt, I checked in with him today and very, very happy with how the continual change in my body composition is coming with all the cycling and us adding some carbohydrates back into my diet around training feel really good. Uh, and been very, very happy with that. So if you want to head over to Hyper Performance Method, check out their programming, check out their nutrition, use code UMSO, and you can save yourself 5% every month at checkout. Um, really great folks, man. I can't say enough good things about the quality of people. This is you know, Steffi Cohen and Hayden Bowe's company, and they're great people, and they keep putting out quality information and products for everyone to get better and get stronger. And I just stand behind companies that do really give a shit. So head over to Hyper Performance Method, use code UMSO, and save yourself some cash. We also have Eat Right Foods, amongst other things that will help you be more awesome. Quality food, man. It, it gets tough. Like, everyone's busy, and there isn't enough time to cook and prep and do all this type of shit. And if you have the option to have this delivered, Eat Right Foods has been awesome. Um, we've been getting meals from them since the beginning of the year and seem to not be slowing down at all. So right now, if you order, use code UMSO, you can get 10 meals delivered to your house for $90. Uh, it's free shipping on the East Coast and $25 flat rate anywhere else in the country. So for $115, you get 10 meals. It's really a great deal. You can get bu you can buy bulk protein. Check out their site and see what meals they offer as well. So eat right foods. Use code UMSO. Save yourself some money. Get food in your fridge that keeps you from making dumb decisions. It's really easy to just stop by and grab a cheeseburger on your way out when you know, there's nothing good in the fridge and you don't feel like cooking, but having this is kind of a way to supplement your normal diet of cooking and doing things. It's really helpful. So the meals show up great. They show up fresh. Uh, they, they last usually two weeks, usually longer than, um, you know, for us to get more meals in. And then just, it's been super convenient. We've been eating the shit out of their turkey. Chili is really, really good as well as their, uh, the steak is awesome. Uh, we even got to do some, some steak with a rub that, uh, habit coffee threw in on that. So speaking of habit coffee, you can use them. So there and save your money on coffee. It's pretty much the best coffee that you've ever had. And I'll stand by that. So your new habit.com use code. Um, so save yourself money on coffee, set up a subscription and just come to your house, man. We also have hate brand goods. That's us. It's not a big deal. I mean, whatever. Use code I'm so there. And finally, one of my favorites I've been using is Kratom, and it's a company called Mind Bullet. Mind Bullet is start, it was started by Mark and Chris Bell. Um, Chris started using it to help with pain tolerance for his hips, and he's you know made some great changes. And so I think this product has been something that both of them have been able to use and feel really good about and then formulate their own bit. Huh, formulate their own. I need some right now. 
No, it's 420. That's what's going on. Right? Anyway, more plants we're talking about. Kratom in Mind Bullet has been awesome, and I think it's a really, really valuable pre-workout product. Uh, a couple pills, it's natural, you're not putting a bunch of bullshit in your system, and it's not going to affect any of your other systems. Like, it's not going to keep you up, you're not going to be too stimulated. I like it. I get a boost from focus. I think a couple pills even help me with work or anything else, so it does work as a bit of a nootropic. Mind <laughs> Bullet, man. It's like uh, Jack Black said in, in uh, Wonder Boy. Kill, kill a yak from 200 yards away with mind bullets. That's telekinesis, Kyle. Levitation, Holmes. So let's go ahead and get to the show. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, go ahead and leave us a five-star review over on iTunes. It really does help. And uh, please welcome our special guest, Muna Lee. Here we go. Give a little background of who you are, how we know each other, and all that, since um, my, maybe my audience isn't aware. Oh, uh, this is weird I talking know. about myself. <laughs> uh, two-time Olympian, track and field Olympian. Uh, got seventh in in Greece. In Barcelona. Barcelona. Or no, Athens. It, was, it was Athens. Athens. I was gonna say I wish. <laughs> yeah. And then fourth and fifth in Beijing. Oh, nice. Went to LSU from yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. Oh man, we're so. You, were you growing up in Kansas City when Bo Jackson was kicking ass? Yeah, like for the Bo Jackson Royals? used to come. He used to come to the hood. Come I'm on, saying, I was in the ghetto, like some <laughs> real bad apartments. He used to come give us baseball tickets. No way. Take us to the game. It was him, all all the guys. Like Bo it was Jackson really cool. rules. They used to pull up in limos though. Come on, just throw him out of the window. No, <laughs> in the in, and we run to the car, and he's just like, "Here's some." That's awesome. It's crazy. Man, different times. Yeah, it's like the Chiefs players is like Tr- Christian Okoye and all them. So it was, it's pretty good that they did. Yeah, that. shooting guys picked up picked up Super Bowl. Yeah, you know how crazy uh, that is. Yeah, one of my buddies, I guess, played for the Chiefs. I don't know when he would have finished, but he played a bunch of years. Uh, John Wellborn was a first round draft pick, offensive lineman. He's okay. I don't know, he's in his forties now. So it's like us getting there. <laughs> oh. I'm close. I don't mind it. I'm happy getting old other than my body doesn't work as good. I'm I'm ready, but then I want to have a kid, so I'm waiting kind of long. Right. I'm trying to no, – I don't want it to rush. I need it to go a little slower because I got plans. <laughs> I hear but. you. I hear you. So where, where are you coaching now? You said you're coaching D1. UMKC. Uh, UMKC. University, University of Kansas City. Yeah. All right. Is it, is it cool being on the other side of it? It's, I think I want to say it's still different because I right. can get out there and compete with a lot of them and they don't, they don't care like we do. Like you got a few, I got a couple that's like, you know what? I think I want to run pro. I, I got a chance. I'm working with a coach that's been there. I think you can get me there. So I want to do it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> we'll see when the time comes around and how right. serious you are. Cause right. it takes more than just a coach to get you there. It, you got to change so much. That's Man, that's one of those things that like I've always loved about track that I just don't think the regular population gets at all because it is so individual and it's uh, that just like if you've made it to the Olympics, like this has been such a singular focus of your life for decades. I cut off so much to get there. Of course. There's no other option. Yeah. Like I think some people like college football, something like that, right? Like I think there's people who just have such a genetic gift and talent that you can kind of just get by and then maybe yeah. even into the NFL. Yeah. But the Olympics don't work that way. <laughs> yeah. Especially not in track and field, maybe trampoline or snowboarding or something like that. But track and field is such a competitive thing that like, I mean, everyone that you see running, this has been the sole focus of their life. Yeah. Yeah for so long. And I just, that level of kind of commitment to it always just always impresses me. Um, yeah, it was, I I just, man, yeah. The Olympics being canceled. I just, I don't know how I would handle something like that as an athlete. Like if this, like say last time, like if the last Olympics were one of those that like, I just missed the cut. Yeah. I know that feeling. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is like that last, my last chance to make the world championship team. I tied for fourth place, like a two way tie or something like that. But they gave me sixth because I guess maybe it was a three way tie. They gave me six. Um, but they didn't take me for the relay because you know they take top six for relays. They was just like, uh, oh, you kind of, you kind of at that age now where we want new people. <sighs> it's like, all right. So what, y'all gonna- what does the age range run for for for? Would you you were a two hundred or one hundred? You ran yeah. the four, didn't you? No, you didn't you run probably, it in college, did you? I ran the four by four freshman year at nationals. Okay, and then I ran a four by four at home, like at LSU meet. Right. And that's that's when me and Stephanie and all of them decided to quit. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was gonna put me first leg. I was like, nah, nah I quit. I ain't doing it. <laughs> Four hundred is too long. Yeah, I took two week a two week break. Stephanie took a month off. It was rough. <laughs> rough. Steph- Stephanie came back and beat me that year. Come on. She needed that break. Durst. What is Durst up to? She just had a baby. Come on. Good for her. Yep, she had a little boy. Where's she living? I guess she's back in Texas. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, okay, so be a little weird not to go over kind of everything going on. And one of those things I really liked about track and field was like the team is such an integrated thing and different than other athletics. We also have male and female. Yeah. And, and you travel that way. You don't ever really, it's never split up by male and female. Like it always just feels like training together. Yeah. And there aren't really any, what swimming is about, it or tennis but it's not on the scale that track is like we have a hundred a hundred kids out there now i mean my experience from being at lsu i guess i didn't really feel like there were any racial politics with the track team but also i'm on the side of that that maybe i don't notice them (laughs) no especially at that age you know only thing i remember is the football team having issues with the confederate flag yeah which they should. Um, I remember that. We were really young, though. I, we yeah. might have been sophomores or something. So it wasn't a big too. deal. It was a big deal, but it wasn't like, you know. Yeah, it was the purple and gold Confederate flag that the the frat boys. See, I didn't even know that. That's I what knew. I remember. I remember now that you're talking about it. That Yeah, they had made a school colors Confederate flag and were using it on stuff. I mean, I don't think LSU was officially using them. They was running out on the football field with it. Oh my God, they did, didn't they? Yes. I didn't go to any football games. <laughs> we were there every weekend. For real? I, I, <laughs> yeah, went to, so. I went to three the whole time we were there. That's crazy. It was so much fun. Well, like, for, so my brother played. My brother played ball at AM. And so, like, by the time I'd finished playing ball in high school, like, I played on Friday night. And then Saturday, I was in College Station to watch him play. Right. And so, and then I got to hang out with him and I knew the guys on the team and, and I've never been a football fan. Yeah. I, I've always liked athletes. And so when he quit playing, there was very much this feeling of like, fuck am I doing here? I don't know any of these people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's crazy but I didn't though, live in the, you know, in, in ECA, like you guys did where, where everyone was there. Yeah. I was just so used to seeing like a lot of those guys now, like now when we go back, if you kept in touch with those guys or follow them on Facebook, they'll get you field passes. Like, of course, if we go home, it's fun because we know them. But yeah, yeah, sure, right. You don't do that for track people, so it's kind of you, <laughs> no. <laughs> you go to the well, game. You go to yeah. the game, and we don't have seats. We just you just know we sit here. Don't take our seats. Like, right. <laughs> Man, track. I I remember just. Track was such a fun collegiate sport. Yeah. That like, I mean, that was when I really first kind of got the bug that I loved traveling. Like I loved all of that, like going to different places. And when they took us to Miami for that spring break that year and they kept lying to us that we were going to go somewhere really cool for spring break another year. And then we never did. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Arizona one we went time. To Arizona. That was a good one. That one was fun. Coach Henry took his team to Mexico. Come on. I went that year, man. You went with them. Yes, I did. That's right. You went and worked under Pat for a couple of years, didn't you? Or did you just run under him? I trained. I went there because when I'm with him, he doesn't charge me. It makes sense. So coach Anderson, the sprint coach coached me. Mm, Gotcha. Gotcha. Anywhere else I would have had to pay and I wasn't making 
no money like that to just be paying not a ton of money in track and fields what you're telling me (laughs) you can't pay a coach and an agent and then you got all these bills and then the irs like at the end of the day it's not that much so So, how much like at that level right like how much how much help is an agent doing at that level like i wonder that right because essentially what i do for a living now is like being a professional athlete. I mean, granted, I don't have to compete in anything anymore, but I have sponsorships and then I have other stuff that gets me paid. I just do all of it myself. Yeah. And no one's calling me and being like, Hey, I got an opportunity for you. Well, with, when I was on my way out, I still kind of ran fast, especially indoor. I was rolling. So when I put up those times, they still hit me up, but it was only because I made a name for myself. They knew how to get in contact with me. And I built a lot of relationships with agents and coaches and meet directors because the agents are the meet directors. Oh, so, so there it is. Yeah. So it's, yeah. that's how you, that's the gatekeeper to actually get to run. Yeah. You gotcha. just got to know people. You, you can't go to meets and act up and then expect them to bring you back. Well, that's the same deal with like as silly as doing the Highland Games thing that I did for so long. Like it was very much all the fun of throwing in college, but no bullshit. Like I didn't yeah. have I didn't have Kent Pagel to deal with. I didn't I didn't have weird coaches or fucking drama or have to go to class. And so like we just got to travel and like for for being this second tier sport, uh, like they pay for us to travel every weekend. They put us up in hotels and there was prize money. Yeah. Not a ton of it, but I mean, I would make, I'd make 25 grand at the end of the year. Yeah. And it was fun. It was a, yeah. it was a good hobby. It was more money than I was going to make trying to play golf or do something else. Yeah. I was just telling somebody how much I miss the travel. I used yeah. to, I mean, if they wouldn't have got rid of continental airlines and all that stuff, you know how many miles I would have? Cause that's, know, all, we right? flew. American that's all we flew. Yeah. And now they don't have it. And I'm like, that's, you cheated, I can't man. even, couldn't even transfer it over or nothing. Starting you know, from scratch. So the Highland Games, whenever they do it in Scotland, like they run it, it's almost like a full track meet. So, I mean, they do a long jump, they do a high jump, but it's all done on grass. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do, they do a 400, they do a mile, okay. uh, they do hundreds and it pays. Like, it, I don't know what it pays for those events, but like, usually I'd make a, a thousand bucks or so going to compete. Like, if, it, if I did five or six events. And so, like, I think about that. Like, if you took a trip to Scotland one summer, just go over there and beat up on a bunch of them. <laughs> like, you'd be lining up at some of these against kids. That would be hilarious. Like, a 10 year old, just let them have it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me, would I let a kid beat me? I was like, no. No way. They'd have to, they have to straight up run faster than me. You gotta all beat out. me to win. I beat little kids. Yes. Hell yeah. That's right. (laughs) You beating the kids on your team? I haven't raced any of them. There you go. I I can, I can still get out there. I raced one of the girls, but it wasn't really a race. It was like, you have to do some weights. It's a circuit. And then you go run a minute and then you got to do it again. And then we did it like eight or nine times. The eighth and ninth time I was killing her. It's like, come on, you got to be faster than this. I'm not even in shape. I haven't ran in three years. It's, it's amazing what, what base gets built like just in your body of, of running as long as you did or doing something as long as you did. Like I haven't thrown in a long time, but if I could like up here, it still works very well. Like I understand how all that happens very easily and could probably yeah. do okay. Uh, yeah. That many reps of something like it's, it's full mastery and like you can do it in your sleep. Yeah. It's crazy. It for sure. For sure. Um, with with track and coaching track like i i know that you and i had talked a while back about like you you love the weight room stuff yeah that's the most fun i usually have is in the weight room because i don't know anything about it but i've been learning yeah so i get in there and i'm like i'm trying to be as buff as everybody else but i don't put on muscle like that so if I can lift like a power lifter and I still, I'm my size, that makes me feel really good. Oh, shoot, man. <laughs> I, I, I mean, if you're not far, I'd love to come talk to your kids. I know that we, we do all the lifting too. So, I mean, anywhere I could help or be of any assistance in, in working with any of them, I'd love to just say hi. And They need all the help they can get. There's yeah. uh, We have a, a weight coach here but he's never worked with tracks. So mm-hmm. the stuff that I don't never want to take none from, it's not like he don't know what he's doing. No, no, of course. But, but it's it's a different animal. 
it's, it's not translating it's not flowing with track so it's kind of they come to practice and I'm like I don't know how I'm supposed to run I don't even know what y'all did yesterday and then if I do know what they did like he's not deep squatting at the beginning of the season, he's only like quarter squatting. He's like, they're oh. gonna max out on squats today. This girl, she's so strong. She's max. She's squatting three hundred pounds. I'm looking at her. She's smaller than me. I know she can't beat me. She can't be stronger than me. I go in there. They going quarter squats. I was like, that's not a deep squat. No, that's I, it, that's not. I can I can quarter squat three hundred right. pounds. <laughs> yeah, I could still do that on one leg. <laughs> <laughs> but still, like, I just wish he would. You know, I was, and the more I've educated on the strength conditioning side since I've been out of college, like what I look at it now, I mean, there's so much good that like powerlifters do and strongman does and all these other types of sports that the one thing I thought about with track and field is that track and field really ends up incestuous with coaching because you end up with a strength and conditioning coach, especially in the throws, because you have a coach that used to be a thrower. And yeah. then throws for a long time, get successful, and that's what you go do. You right. want to coach. And then so they take the weight room and it's whatever they did in college plus one or two things that they liked. Yeah. And then, you know, five or six generations down the road from that of, of coaches who've done the same, now you've got like we're not even deadlifting. Like yeah. we, we didn't still, deadlift in college at all. We did, but it was light. <laughs> it was just more about technique and rips like it was an exercise yeah. see and i i don't know how much i think that's the move with like uh even even sprinters or any of that because you're already getting that on the track like i, well, I don't think you need lightweight explosive movement in the gym because that's all you're doing out there well see our deadlift wasn't explosive like when i went to altus we did the hex bar is this what it's called yeah 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 the trap bar. and we did yeah we did the split stance okay deadlift, like where it was like just like coming out of the blocks. Yeah. So that did help, but okay. I couldn't really go heavy. Either I couldn't grip it right because I'm weak here or I would hurt my back. Yeah. So, well, see, that's an issue that I would have with, say, the split stance doing it because track and field also has a very habit of trying to over specifies like, like a, or be sport specific too much on everything. It's like, well, we got to, you know, this is more of a mimic. Whereas like, just, just get strong. Strong will translate out there. Well, it's just yeah. keep you healthy and make you 10% stronger. Yeah. Like you'll perform better. That's, that's, that's the equation. That's what happened to me at A&M. That's when I started running really fast. She just got me strong in general. Yeah. With core basic weights and squats. I did some leg press here and there because I had messed up my hamstring. But other than that, it was the basic stuff. It was nothing fancy. I know you were a good squatter. What was, what was your best squat? I was not. Um, I never squatted over 150 at LSU. No. And then when I got to AM, she got me to 245. Wow. But that was the first time I ever squatted like max squat because we didn't max squat at LSU. Which which makes sense too. I, I don't think track athletes particularly need to. I mean, other than having a measuring stick of like using percentages, but you can you can do that different ways based on just perceived effort. Yeah, you're gonna not- have to teach me that. I was supposed to learn that in the class I was taking, but I still suck at it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've, I've got some stuff I'll, I'll shoot you over uh, to your email that is kind of, um, uh, I guess, like a way to auto-regulate without needing like 90% or 70% of a max. Yeah. Like, you know, being able to. So one of the easiest ways to do it, especially people like us who've lifted or trained as long as we have, uh, it's called RPE or rate of, per- uh, rate of perceived effort. Yeah. And so it's essentially like, was this an 8 or a 9 out of 10 if 10 is the hardest actual effort you could do? Okay. And so like today, let's keep things at a seven. And like, you already know, like, I know what a seven feels like. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, seven I is something do. I can probably do for five. You know, a nine is something I could do for two. And that's. That know, makes sense. Yeah. And that way, that way it gives a little bit more of a float than a hard percentage number because man, some days you beat up. Yeah. And some, some days the same, what was a seven yesterday is a five today. <laughs> I think because I didn't know any better in the weight room, it didn't matter. I was of just course. going there and doing whatever she put on. I didn't even look at how much weight was on the bar. I was just going there and try to do it. But on a track, I could, he said, he never take, gave us percentages on a track. He was like, okay, you run this time. 
and you, you better hit it or you run faster or you gotta, if you don't hit it, you gotta run more. And I'd be like, all right, that means I need to turn it up. It's gotta be a yeah. nine or a 10, you know, yeah. like, right. Yeah. This is going to be a nine effort. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know that number or like when you guys would run what measured 300, three, uh, measured 35 seconds or whatever it was. Oh yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Man, one of the worst days ever. I came out to the track and Kent was late. And so I was bored. And so I jumped in on a 300 with the jumpers. Just I was like, if I go run a 300, it'll be all right. I'm athletic. <laughs> I, was, I was done for the day. Like I, I had to go home. <laughs> like, like I laid on the ground and almost threw up. I ran one 300 yard sprint. I was like, that's it. I'm done. Mm-hmm. You picked the wrong day. Wrong day. Coach Boo was out there killing people. Yeah. That was a Saturday, wasn't it? Probably. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Kent was That's two hours late. That's the only time late. I saw them run. <laughs> yeah. He's still That's doing cool. it, man. That's cool. Yeah, I ran into him a couple times, like, uh, back when I was still in Louisiana and was out kind of going to look at track stuff. I went and did a couple track meets and threw just to have something to go do. Threw better post-collegiate than I ever did in college, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, you, you start doing your own weights. Well, that and I taught myself how to spin in the shot court, okay. whereas... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kent gave me half of a practice and he's like, I don't think you're a sprinter, a spinner, a spinner. Yeah. I tried it in my level one class. Yeah. I could be a thrower. (laughs) Got it. I got this lined up. (laughs) I was like, as soon as you put weight, I'm going to tip to the side. (laughs) Oh (laughs) man. Memories. Oh, for sure. Right. And it's, it's a, such a, (sighs) It's cool seeing, I guess, like our class grow up, you know, uh, you know, see people do stuff. I still, I, I stayed in touch with John, a uh, creatine dude that we threw with for a while. Okay. And then Hunter was another guy I'd thrown with. And every now and then I'll talk to Joe and Katie and Mallory occasionally. I see, I see Mallory post here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> It, it's an interesting time in life, right? Like to, to share that with everyone, like be on, be on a team like that, especially, yeah. man, we, we got a free pass as throwers. We weren't very good as far as putting up points anywhere <laughs> compared, compared to what y'all were doing. We were just happy to be part of it. Uh, at least how I felt. We, got, we, got, was, <laughs> we included y'all in everything though. Oh, yeah, it like, yeah. It's not even like that nowadays. They don't, they don't bond like we did. Really? Yeah. It's different. Now, we also didn't really have cell phones that worked well. <laughs> That's a big that part Nokia, of it. Had that little Nokia. <laughs> yeah, I had a Nokia brick too. Like I remember when, like we were juniors when I got a camera phone and they were terrible. <laughs> the flip phone. Yeah. When, yeah. I remember Walter got one. And then who was Tron? Tron. I haven't thought about that guy forever. I'm trying to think, is he on my Facebook? I hope he's doing well. I'm gonna have to look. I hope he's doing well. Every once in a while, I'll try to search someone up on Instagram, and like, I'm always, I'm always weirded out when I half can't find people, and I'm like, do they just not have one? Because that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people <laughs> don't have Instagram, but they'll still have Facebook. They will not close it for some reason. See, I'm done on Facebook. Yeah, I stay as far away from it as I can. I only, I'm on there, and then I just block people. <laughs> it's, it, 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 the whole everything on Facebook is like explaining things to my mom my like, mom i told my mom to st- stay off my page like <laughs> don't make comments if you do don't have Get conversations with strangers because no. half these people i don't know they're just track people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please don't get in an argument with the track people because we're gonna come and defend you no matter if you're right or wrong and then i'm gonna look horrible <laughs> yeah I'm like you talking about my mama <laughs> so i just yeah. tell her just don't comment now why do you think like with, with track and field, like it, it's still a tough sport to make a living at, like even at the top that you were there, yeah. but like some, I mean, there's a huge discrepancy in pay, right? Like, I mean, if you're, if you're an Olympian hundred meter runner, who's placing as well as you did as a male, is there a yeah. big difference in pay between those two? I feel like there is. I mean, I'm not sure how much, but, um, you know, it's a man's world. They're going to get way more appearance money. Um, they try to keep it pretty level. Yeah. 
but there's no way because still the men still get way more attention. They get more commercials. The yep. girls, it's just if you get a girl commercial, it's because of something that's involving all women. You know, yeah, it's it never to, it's right. for it's just never for track. You know, and then uh-huh. you got to have a certain look, which they've been changing. They've been, they've changing, been changing a little bit, but um, yeah, they have certain look, huh? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's uh man, it was it you know um Daryl Hill or Darrell Hill. Darrell Hill, yeah. Yeah, shot putter. Um he's he's an he's a nice dude. I was able actually to kind of introduce or he's uh recently started working with Monster. And uh so pretty pumped on that. I hope I hope that works out. I I want to yeah. see that guy get out there and throw some bombs. Yeah. So it's that's cool. <sighs> I'm trying to get um, some type of nutrition bar stuff for our school. Okay. You know, like, okay, so I recently got an office at Hy-Vee Arena here. Have you been right. to no. Hy-Vee Arena? Uh-uh. You, when you come in town, I'm going to show you the whole building. It's crazy. Because okay. right. it used to be Kemper Arena. This is where they used to have, like, all the NCAA basketball games back oh, in the day. Oh, shit. Okay. But now they changed it. But anyway, I got a little office down there. They were turning into an a, a actual Olympic lifting weight room nice they have a gym but we can't do any freeways and he's like why can't the the school lift here why don't you bring your kids here to live i was like y'all don't even have an olympic bar in the building <laughs> right <laughs> we can't lift there so because yeah, you don't have gave, equipment they gave me permission to to do that as oh, of like to, three, to three, order gym stuff yes three days ago like hey, if you need any help with that i, I they, can help they don't know what they do and I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I would more than happy help you make sure that we get good stuff and quality stuff. The only thing is I'm not certified as a lifting coach, but I have my groups. I'll take you know. certifications. I, yeah, I did it through track and field and I failed it through Coach Boo. But he told me just send it back in because I had the flu. So I didn't pay attention in class. I was in the <laughs> class, laid out like this sweating and I couldn't smell and I can, it was so, he was like, are you sure you gonna get everybody in here sick? I had a fever the whole class. And I ain't gonna fly anymore, man. You have to wear <laughs> so a mask. I turned everything in like I was supposed to, but it was like, it wasn't good. Now I feel like I can redo it and send it to coach Boone. He might still do it. He told okay. me to, I just haven't, I haven't even opened it up. Yeah. As far as, as far as outfitting a gym with equipment, I, I, that's easy. Yeah, that, that's an easy thing. We can pick stuff that doesn't have to be the fanciest stuff. We we can pick stuff that won't break. Yeah, I, that's that's what you need. This is different than like someone's bougie garage. Like you need something that's going to run a bunch of idiot kids through it at full speed. Yeah, I didn't want a lot. I didn't want them to feel spoiled. I need them to actually feel like how we wanted. We wanted to get something. We had to work hard for it. You're just not going to come in and it's just going to be easy. So. They're going to have to share this and share that. And they got to learn. It's be more it's like under the, uh, under the PMAC when we trained in there. Yeah. It's like that. No windows. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got windows. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I I'd, l- I'd love to, to come that way. And if, if, if you want me to come and help with designing that weight room, I'd, l- I'd love to be part of that. That would be great. They don't even want to take the carpet up. I was like, well, that's fine. But when you put the squat racks in there, I'm going to need it. I'm going to need you to raise it on a platform or something. Which well, you know, carpet's scary. not bad, right? Dep- it depends on what type of carpet. Because a lot it of powerlifting will actually, oh, that ain't good. So a lot of powerlifting well, uses carpet because you, you, uh, you won't slip. Yeah. So it's, it's good for shoes unless it's thick carpet. If it's thick carpet, it's trashy. I just don't like it, but that's fine. I understand. <laughs> it's, it's not the end of the world. If it's thick carpet, it sucks. But you can always build a platform on top of it. And platforms are easy to build with just two by sixes and two by fours. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, do it's easy like enough. That. They're, they're indestructible. You can yeah. do, like if you take two by sixes and lay them just long, like side by side, so that they're six inches wide, two inches tall, like make that wide enough and then lay two sheets of plywood on top of it to build your square, it is indestructible. Okay. Yeah, like they it, not, it, do that and have some bumper plates. It's easy. They're not, they not going to build anything. They're going to buy it, which okay. means I'm, I'm waiting for them. And so they feel like buying it with all this stuff going on. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, pretty simple. I mean, someone like Sorenex or something like that could very easily quote something like that to have an affordable run or yeah. ghost equipment makes my, there's a, there's a bunch of brands out there that I've got friends with that I can help. 
Yeah, well, I'm needing it. So thank love, you. Any, please, <laughs> please don't hesitate. I, I, I'm really serious. If if I can help, I'd love to. Yeah, when I told and, them we need a bumper place, they was like, bumper place, weights in the other way. I was like, you can't drop those. <laughs> they <laughs> they have no clue. A lot of them in there, they don't even know what it's like to train. Of course, like not. we but like that, we train. their job. You Some know, they of them don't are know. athletes, though. We got know. a pro. We got a bunch of pro b- basketball players. Well, they didn't work out. Them. Basketball players are known for never working out. I know, we, especially I not with it. weights. I see it all the time right now. They don't even squat. It's pretty bad. Man, it's. I've got a friend of mine who's now the uh, strength conditioning coach for uh, the Lakers, and like even seeing what he does with them, like part of that. But at that level, it's so much. You're not developing kids anymore. Like you're, you're just trying to keep keep thoroughbreds healthy. Right. So they can so they can play. Like at that not only that, like these dudes are six ten, six eleven. They're baby giraffes. Like the fact that they can <laughs> sprint and run at all is amazing to me. <laughs> <laughs> baby giraffes. Man, I remember I remember being in the weight room one day and uh like Shaq had come through in college and I just remember watching him bench. I think I was spotting him. And like just how long his arms were, like he's racking that bench at about where I squat. (laughs) Poor guy. (laughs) Just the longest arms of all time. Him and Jamal. And Jamal throwing with us. Yeah, I talked to Jamal. How's he doing? I guess he's all right. Good. Um, You know, his daughters, Zamile and all their daughter, one of them can dunk. Come on. I think she's a freshman in, in high school now. Go for so it. So they may they may be sophomores now or something. I Hell don't know. yeah. Hell yeah. I think I went to one basketball game. Oh, we used to really go to the basketball game. Come on. More basketball games than that that's when Lolo used to take me to all the games because um Jermaine. So oh. I would had to I had to go support the guy. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. It was fun. Hell yeah. College was I couldn't I couldn't wait. I hated school. Like everything else that we were doing was great. I just didn't like having to go to class. I hated it. <laughs> I, I don't think honestly, after my freshman year, I bet there wasn't like a like a whole week of classes that I attended. I skipped something. I Maybe every day. <laughs> I couldn't skip because, you know, we were the reason that they made study hall hours when you got to swipe the card. Me and Stephanie. I, I got out just before. Like I, I, I was, I was, they never, I somehow bypassed that whole system. We were the reason. Me and Stephanie would swipe the card and leave, leave study hall. <laughs> and then they start doing, okay, if you do that now, it's $50. I was like, first off. $50? In college, $50. who has that type of money? Right. They was like, and then until you pay it, you cannot walk the stage. That's when I went back to graduate. I didn't. I yeah. didn't walk stage anyway. <laughs> I wasn't. Then my parents was like, "Please, I want to. Oh, yeah. I want to see you take some pictures." I was like, oh, "I couldn't okay. do it. I couldn't do it. I felt like it was just like I've wasted enough time pursuing this thing. It took. I don't want to do this. Yeah, and then sit around in some auditorium in a celebration that's not really for me. Is <laughs> is isn't, isn't my cup of tea? <laughs> but oh man, so. What what crazy with everything going on have you guys had in Kansas City? Has there been has there been protests? Has there been any of the rioting or Yes. They tore up the plaza. Oh shit. Yeah. So it was crazy because um the weekend the that Friday or whatever day they started rioting, we were supposed to go and get some shoes because I need some more Nikes to run in. I still got the Nikes that I got. Like, I was like, you know what? It's time for me to get some new shoes. We're going to go to Nike this weekend. They tore up Nike, stole <sighs> everything. Oh my gosh, I don't have anywhere to get shoes because most, most stores are still closed. With, you yeah, know, right, yeah, yeah. Up. It's COVID, yeah. So I was excited. And then I was like, dang, now I got to wait again. You just do them online. Shop, shop from home <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> I, really, I really wanted to try them on, though, because it's been so okay. long. Are you, you just going to wear them or run in them? I was actually going to work out with my athlete. All right. All right. So the little bit of running that we're doing is slow enough for me not to feel too horrible. I got you. As soon as she starts sprinting, I'm like, okay, I'm not a sprinter. I'm not a sprinter anymore. I'm done. Y'all can have that. <laughs> it, just, uh, it, just, it just gets itchy too quick? Yeah. Like, I don't want to feel that much pain. No. Like, I, I tell you, before, you know, my, I think one of the last seasons I had, I remember – 
like off season, I was going to go change things up with the way I was training. I was going to go run some sprints and do stuff like that on the football field and put on, put on cleats and, you know, run in the grass, do some like rolling hundreds type thing, build 30, hold 30, and then coast out. And, uh, I remember getting to full speed and just thinking, Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's as fast as we run now. <laughs> Being <laughs> like, huh, <laughs> this is sad. Yeah. I think, um, most of the protesting is over though. Is it? I don't know. I it's, think it's, they've... it's not here and it's not, it's not in L. I mean, in the big cities, they're still, they're still yeah, going for it, man. Yeah. But here, maybe they're protesting like in front of the jail or the police station or something, but not down in the shopping areas. Like, man, I, I hope mean, protests continue. I hope riots stop because smashing up businesses. And not only that, like, I mean, they're, they're also finding out that, I mean, the people protesting and the people rioting are not the same people. Yeah. It's, I'm just sitting at home watching it on people's lives. Like, oh my gosh, did he just kick in the door? He didn't show his face. You got to completely delete everything you just witnessed Scary. because you're, you're a witness to this or you're an accomplice because you just sat there and watched him do it. I was like, it's just too much happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it was like the guy it's, that I watched kick a door down, kick down a black owned beauty salon door. I was like, she didn't even have nothing in there, but it was stupid because he was just being going off a of rage because he got pepper sprayed and then he just started kicking doors. I was like, That's um, so getting pepper Go. sprayed sucks. Oh, I was in a room and okay. they, they sprayed somebody else and I was way across the room and it still hit me. So oh, I was like, yeah, it's rough. I, yeah, can't I, was, do I was in a bar one night that got hosed <laughs> out pretty good and like I didn't get hit with it, but it's not fun. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, I don't like that feeling. So I don't do anything where it's going to, I'm going to feel something like that. <laughs> they was like, you're not down for the cause. It's like, I am, but I'm not down for I'm not down <laughs> that to be part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I like to be able to breathe. I like to be able to see. You know, yeah. All that you know, and that, that's a weird spot too. Like what you're saying that, that, I think people have the right to also let the people who want to go do that, do it. You know, that I don't think it's a mandatory thing. I think there's different ways to spread word. I think there's different ways to, to show support. And one of those yeah. ways is stay, stay out of the way for the people that, that have a message. And yeah. man, I'm, I'm it's one of those times, man, I'm proud of the millennials. It's crazy. They're getting after it. They are good making new rules and stuff like it's just really Man, we're, we're seeing police reform in different places. Um, fuck about time. Yeah. You know, and it's, it is the racism thing is so weird, especially growing up in the South. Like, I mean, I grew up in Louisiana and so it's, yeah, it's, it's real. Yeah. You know, and them tearing down monuments. Fuck good. <laughs> you should. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like at least, I, it, I, even if they didn't do that, at least match it. Put some of the good history and the bad history. But, you know, like if they gonna make a history, put it in a museum. Very short break in the middle of the podcast talk about Mark Bell's slingshot. <laughs> great products, great people, great stuff. Their gangster wraps have been my favorite ones to use for for wrist wraps forever. I threw in the Highland Games with them. I believe they're a great wrap there. They're plenty stretchy to throw with, but they're also stiff enough for all your benches. Um, hit my all-time PR bench at 200 kilos uh, last January, and that was also awesome using uh, slingshots and using some of their elbow sleeves. Anyway, great products. They make one of the best lifting belts on the market. Mark Bell Slingshot. Get yourself a slingshot, man. Maybe a hip circle. Things that'll make you better. Marbell Slingshot. Use code UMSO. Save yourself 15% at checkout. Back to the show. We've known for a long time, man, that look, history is told by the winners. That is true. That's and, very true. The Confederate Army didn't fucking win. <laughs> this, this is, it's, it's treason. Yeah. Fuck them. And I, I, I guess, I mean, I understand paying enough attention to history so that you don't repeat history. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I can for sure say like during this shutdown, I watched uh, this World War II in color documentary that's on Netflix and just, just seeing people, you know, in, in Germany idly sit as though, well, this ain't got shit to do with me. And like, man, that's, it's worth paying attention to that. 
people will comply. And that's yeah. definitely something to be careful of. And uh, I'm glad I'm glad people are standing up fighting. I'm glad people are talking, yeah. you know, and discussing stuff. And yeah, before everybody was just super quiet, but now it's not just black people. It's a lot of different races speaking up. Yeah, I've seen so many. Like my fiance, he he's Filipino Chinese, mm -hmm. and he didn't know anything about Emmett Till. His okay. First time ever seeing the video or the <sighs> the pictures and stuff was like last week, and he just he said I just didn't know that it was like that, and he was telling me how um, he had a conversation about being pulled over by the police and how him and his sisters and his brothers joke about it because they get out of tickets and they get like the police had to put in the back of the car to let them know, let other police officers know that they they're safe. They're good citizens. And I was like, what you get hats. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know nothing about that. He was like, what? I was like, that's not something they offer unless you know, you know, you, you a cop, you got a, a family member that's a cop or something, but I don't have any family. Right. Well, I guess I do now, but I still didn't know about that. I was like, how come they never told me this secret? <laughs> Is it a yeah. secret? That's, I, that, that's wild. Yeah. And so he was like, we joking about it. But then I hear, I heard that I told him the story about the first time I was with my brother and the cops harassed them. We were little here in Kansas city and I just took off running. <laughs> They caught like my brother and them stopped because you know they were older, right? Yeah, they're teenagers already, and if they ran, it would be a completely different situation. Just, but me being just a girl, harassed for no reason, I just took off to go get my parents. Like I ran like five blocks straight. <sighs> I mean, they slammed my brothers and them on the ground. Come on, and arrested so them. What, said they, what, what's the whole story? Like what what happened? You guys are just we went to Piggly Wiggly. I don't even know if it exists anymore. It's a grocery store. We went to get hot pickles and chips and we were walking back home. So it was at least 10 blocks. Okay. It was a nice walk. And it was just me and my cousins, my best friend. Yeah. It was just like five of us. We just walk in, we get somewhere and it started getting a little dark. And the next thing you know, they just come swooping in. Woo, woo, woo. And I was like, come on, who, the hell are they looking for? And I'm literally, I'm in middle school. Yeah, I probably I probably was sixth grade. My brother was probably ninth or tenth, and then they just started. They just attacked them, and then he's like, "We just kids. We just went to the store." And then my brother was like, "No, no." They slammed them, put them on the concrete and stuff. And then my brother's like, "Run!" Because they weren't messing with us. We were really right. little. So we, me and my cousin, took off. And what was this? Just to search them or to? And they said he fit the description of something that happened in the neighborhood. And so I ran and got my dad. When my dad came back and was like, they just kids. They was just going to the store. They arrested my dad too. Come on. Yep. See, it, 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 it. It's, it's perfect shit like that. Like th these aren't stories I have growing up. Yeah. You know I, that I mean? was like, like my first experience. My only run in <laughs> with law enforcement would have been in my hometown. And it was like a, one of those senior nights where like, we're going to go roll like toilet paper, the cheerleaders or whatever. Cause they fucked up the football players houses. And there were probably like 15 of us piled into cars. And the cop who pulled us over was a guy who used to play football with us. He drove me home. I was like, well, I'll just ride with you. And that was my choice. Like yeah. I've never had. I, I can't think of any negative. Now I'm not easy around police. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's not my favorite thing. Like getting pulled over. I still get, you know, nervous and anxious and those type of things or even, even going through customs at the airport. Like I'm still, there's still some little bit of anxiety of like, I, I've screwed something up. They mean the airport though. <laughs> Man, they don't got, smile. They don't say hi. I got so scared going to Canada. I had some edibles in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot, like I, they were like a, in like a Mentos tin. Okay. And so I didn't think anything of it. And they're in my fanny pack. And so like I got called out and like brought to secondary customs where they go through all your stuff. And I'm just like, oh shit. Like I've never been arrested and it's going to be, I'm going to be 36 getting arrested <laughs> with an edible on him, like going to Canada where it's legal. It's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. And guy looked at it, didn't say a word and just moved on. Yeah. It's like, easy yeah. day. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's wild. And then, I mean, the, 
I don't, man, there's just no good answers for that. Like we need better, better cops. Cause yeah, the whole defund police, that's, I, I get everything we're trying to say there, but you can't not have something as an authority. Yeah. We just need, we need good cops. It's not going to be the wild, wild west anymore. We can't go back to the. <laughs> no, it's not a good idea. <laughs> that's not a good idea. We got, we don't have enough smart, sane people to operate. I, know, I was, I was talking to somebody about uh, how I watch hand, the hands made tell mm. or it's something else. Walking dead. Yeah. I was like, it's going to be, it's going to be real bad. If we ever take defund in a way, like who is, who is the authority then? Well, if they take I think it's also really funny, right? Like all my very liberal friends out West uh, are, are panicky about guns right now because there's riots and all this type of stuff. These are all people who are very anti second amendment and all this and, you know, guns, blah, blah, you know, are terrified of them. But now it. that they feel threatened, they they're won't. interested in protecting themselves. And I'm like, why I don't you just go buy one? Since it's such an easy thing to do is that's what you've been yelling about for the last couple of years is that, you know, guns are so they just hand them out. Well, they don't. Yeah. You know, well, it's funny because I wasn't even thinking about guns. I, I have one. Right. It's the, the little bitty one. I haven't even shot it yet. I got bullets. But the thing <laughs> I've been looking up is gas masks. That's the most thing we really need. I need it for my whole family the way things are going. <laughs> yeah, tear gas and shit like that, man. Thing well, I think they're know. starting to they're starting to make reform on that, that the police cannot use tear gas on citizens. Yeah, because they was just throwing it <sighs> just because. Some I of mean, the videos, here, man. I've seen some videos here. Cause like I said, I had a friend that was live and he was showing, he was way far back, but he was showing like the group that was in a circle of like peaceful protesting, but they started throwing water bottles at the cops. And then they, then when they threw the, the tear gas or no, they threw the, the thing that lights the bright light. Oh or yeah. Noise. yeah the flash they, threw that, they threw that first. And then it was like, see now we were peaceful protesting. I was like, I saw, well, I saw a couple water bottles go flying. So if you're throwing they, water bottles, it's not peaceful anymore. And so that's what I saw. But I mean, you know, they, I mean, look, and we've, we've, we've seen both sides. We, yeah. We've seen. They didn't know, have to. Yeah. Throw it's, not, it, look, it's not a pretty answer. And what is it? It's a MLK <laughs> quote. That's uh, what rioting is the voice of the unheard. Yeah. And like that, it's people frustrated. It's people mad. I get yeah. it. And not only that, there's people that are scared and on yeah. both sides, the police don't know what to do. Cause I mean, like it's easy to dehumanize them too, but I mean, these are people with jobs trying to go home. Yeah. You know, this is a thing they signed up to do that either they feel called for or it was the best job they could get. And and they want to go home too. Yeah. And then you see shit like in Buffalo where they pushed over that 75 year old man. I was so, like, come on, man, he's not a threat. I don't care if he would have stepped to me out of like, let's go, come on, let's go talk. You know, that's what right. you're supposed to do. Like, be it's community, community outreach. It, it's, you know, and then you've seen, you've seen some really great police departments too, that step down and, and will take a knee with people and talk and like, and I've seen, I've seen cases where the, the cops that took a knee with the protesters in Chicago, they're talking about can't, uh, the unions kicking them out and, and cutting their pension. Fuck Dang. these people. That's crazy. You know what? Fuck these people like that type of stuff. Like that's the issue is with the unions that that's why that fucking cop that killed George Floyd, like it, it's union stuff. You know, I don't know if it's his case in particular, but that's why you can't get rid of bad cops. Yeah. Because they're protected by the union. And I'm like, fuck all that. Like, I, I, I think cops should be, should be punished harsher than civilians for breaking the law. He's like, if anyone knows the law, you, you know, yeah. you did this wrong. Like, yeah. yeah. It looked like he didn't even feel guilty about killing him. I was like, and he knew the guy. Nine so minutes. that made it like... It's like crazy. Nine minutes, a long time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I saw the, the shirt that they made with all the like, his final words. And I was like, it's he brutal. was pleading for that long. Like, I couldn't even wear that shirt. That, that hurt so much. That's not something I could there, see. There's a new Dave Chappelle special, and he, he addresses it. And, uh, <sighs> His, his take on it is really strong. You know, just talking yeah. about like you hear, you hear this man, this grown man 
cry for his dead mother, his dead mother. And he said, the only other time I've seen that happen in my life was my father on his deathbed asking for his grandmother. That man knew he was going to die. And that's, that's fucking tough, man. That's it. I'm mad at the cops standing around doing nothing. And I don't know how I feel about people who watched it do nothing because I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to get beaten either. Yeah. It's it's tough. It's it's a, it's a real, it's a real shitty spot. But I think when I was little, my dad told me like certain things, like when dealing with cops, either you just don't say anything so you don't get involved or at that time, because I was a kid and I was a girl when my brother told me to run, I just ran because they weren't going to come after me. I wasn't the, the target. Right. So yeah, you didn't fit a description. They weren't looking yeah. for a middle school girl. <laughs> yeah. So me taking off running, they were going to let me go, yeah. you know, but then there was a time like I had a neighbor that was bad. He was, they were juvenile. I was like, they yeah, really sure. were. So they stole a van. We were all outside playing as kids, having a good time. <laughs> playing with the dog and then you just see him and his friend come running and just running 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 oh, running no. and they run in the house and say don't say nothing we're like what the heck the cops come around the corner with guns drawn i'm standing there like oh. don't shoot me please don't shoot me <laughs> the dog was going crazy he's about to shoot the dog the dog is on a chain on the porch can't get, get can't get in the yard so i'm standing there like oh my gosh he was like don't move where'd they go i just said i turned he's like don't move <laughs> everybody else just kind of jetted in the house like Cause we were kids again sure. and I'm just like, I'm face to face with this cop. He put the gun down eventually, but the other guys were still coming. And then, then across the street was just all grass and woods and stuff. So they could go search over there or they could just go, they can't go in the house, but they knew they was in the area. But if we were like acting like we didn't know anything, they weren't allowed to talk to us. But my dad already told us, don't talk to the cops. You need to come get the adults. See, that's, and, and even, even that, like you as a kid not getting in trouble, this is such a different take on police than I had growing up. Yeah. My, my, I was just told, be polite, listen to authority. Oh, if no, they, they tell you cu- to do a thing, do it. They was cussing us out. My friend was like, don't shoot my dog. I'm like, dude, the dog might have to go because <sighs> it's our life. You know, <laughs> like the dog, he, he was real close to getting bit, but you know, like, if he focused on the dog, we need to go. So yeah. as soon as he started asking questions, I was like, well, I think I hear my mom and I'm just walking away and I walk in the house and we didn't go back outside the rest of the day. <sighs> it was like probably like noon. He's like, yep, that's, that's our day. We can't, cause they're going to be around this neighborhood searching for a while. So that's now, it. Now, is that area of Kansas City still rough? Yeah, it's still rough. I mean, they built a freeway through it now. So, but it's still, okay. <laughs> it's still, um, the inner city is still rough. It's still near, near prospect, but with all the stuff and reconstruction that they're doing, people are buying up the houses. They're, you know, building it up. I'm like, I want to go back and buy my old house. I mean, well, I don't know. I don't know. Cause it was haunted. You know, <laughs> your house was haunted. Oh my gosh. It was the Come scariest on. house I've ever lived in. It's I nice. got to hear some haunted, haunted house story. I can tell you. It was terrifying in the house. What would happen? I remember the only story I usually tell is, like um me and my sister my sister came to my room because she was scared so she's sleeping in my bed I mean I took the sheets everything was perfect because I knew she was coming and I didn't want her taking the cover from me because she twist and turn at that age so I had it tucked real good the blankets and everything (laughs) both the sheets that we were holding on to and the blankets were ripped all the way off to the the foot of the bed and then we didn't move and I'm peeking like who did it I know you didn't do it but who down there and you can just see like figures come on and we just was, she, I mean, me and my sister do not cuddle to this day, but I mean, we was hugging that night. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, we can get up together. They're not going to do nothing. But I mean, there in that house, we never left doors open because they would always slam or open. I had a skeleton key. I used to lock it. The mugs would still be open. <laughs> the closet door open shut. You can always see a little boy in the closet. My mom was like, you no just dreaming. No fucking dreamin'. way. It was creepy. Little boy in the closet. No, thank you. It was creepy. Yeah. I don't believe in ghosts at all, but I believe in weird shit. My dogs were scared of the basement and scared of the attic. You lock the dog in the basement, it was like rooms down there. And concrete used to flood and stuff like that, but she would not leave the the top step no matter what. Come on. Wow. 
and I wouldn't go down there because it's it too creepy and cold. <laughs> well, all right. This looks like I need to make a trip to Kansas City soon. I really want to get a house in the city, though, because so, that, so we just we just moved into our spot, and uh, it's kind of a it's an area in St. Louis uh, called the Grove that um, um, used to be rough. I was chatting with my neighbor uh, Patrice; she'd been here for like thirty years, and she was telling me that there was a there was a point on this street where I mean somebody got shot in my front yard years and years ago. Uh, St. Louis, they, yeah, they used to shoot out the street lights on oh, on, yeah. the, on on the block. Yeah, that's that mean her her street was the spot. That's where yep. they sold. Yeah, so they installed these big concrete balls, like on the street to block it off to make it a dead end okay. instead of a four way, which I'm stoked on now because now we don't have traffic. <laughs> it's, it's great for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the neighborhood's turning. Like, I mean, there's there's like three or four renovated houses on the street. There's three or four completely abandoned houses on the street, and then there's a variety in between. And they're going to get bought up quick because now with all these teams winning and teams leaving, they're just still trying to build up this whole yeah. city again. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely need, I definitely need to come out your way. Um, oh. Man, as far as strength and conditioning goes, uh, Strong Barbell Club is, is in North St. Louis. Not North St. Louis, North Kansas City. And uh, okay. a buddy of mine owns it, JP, and he's sharp guy. Their team there knows everything you could want to know as far as powerlifting, lifting strength goes. JP played college football. He's also squatted a thousand pounds. Thousand. <laughs> yeah, bench benches over like almost seven. Dang. He, incredibly strong guy. Uh, yeah, I, I should I should just come meet you out there one day. And then go check out that spot and kind of see what we can figure out weight room wise. Yeah. I have a, a girl that just had, she had a knee surgery about a year ago and she wants to start by running hurdles. Whew. But I said that I would rather her just learn how to run and sprint again and yeah. not really worried about jumping over hurdles just yet. Well, I mean, it's one of those things, right? The easiest way to kind of explain that to someone that age is like, well, you got to learn to run anyway. If we're going to run hurdles, you already got to learn to sprint. Right. And until you can learn to sprint confidently and never think about your knee, we don't need to do hurdles. Yeah. She's not going to do any running anytime soon because, I mean, the Olympics aren't until next year. What's, what are we starting early for other than rehabbing? Rehab. She, does, she did rehab with her, whoever they sent her to to do it with. Yeah. But it's different when you come to track and you got to strengthen everything, oh, not just sure. that knee. So. Yeah, it's not it's not PT. It's not going to physical therapy for my mom. Right. Like you you need physical therapy to get back after it. Yeah. Different. So I got to build a program from that. I ain't never hurt my knee before, so I'm about to be hitting you up because I know you have. Happy, happy to help. I've, I've had nine knee surgeries. <laughs> Lisa, send it over to me so we can start working because I think she's coming Monday. I was just gonna put her on the bike for now and see. That's what, good. Yeah. Work, how she first, looks. first things is is range of motion. Get rid of any swelling she's got. Like focus on those. And then like after that, start working on like strength, have her do like single leg step downs. Step so like downs. St stand on a box and then step mm -hmm. down and like tap your foot and then stand back up. I'll, sh I'll, I'll text you a video of one. Okay. Um, have her do that and then control tempo. So like three seconds on the way down and then fire back up. Okay. Did she do an ACL? I don't know. Okay. She said um, she hit a hurdle at like, nationals or something like that and it just completely she ruined all the cartilage Ugh. so she just had all her cartilage replaced okay so maybe just meniscus stuff she may be I okay have, yeah that's I better than ACL ask. yeah just yeah let me know and if there's any way I can help I, I, like I said I'd love to. Yeah, I, like I can do, do hamstrings this. I can do quads yeah. <laughs> I can do calves but I was like knees comes it comes know. with the territory right you you compete long enough there's injuries the injuries I've been through, I know how to get back from them. <laughs> hey, ain't nobody gets out for free. Yeah. There ain't nobody who, who does it for as long as we did it that you don't look, if you want to be your best at a thing, you have to push that line. And if you push that line, sometimes you, sometimes you mess up and you go a little farther. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the trick is like, especially at that like elite level, you're, you're trying to stay on this razor thin line of like, I'm not pushing hard enough and I'm not creating adaptation to get better. 
but anything over that line, I'm going to get hurt. And this becomes this very minute world to live in between not training hard enough and I'm overtrained. Yeah. They're used to overtraining here. Oof. I get yelled at for not giving them enough. I was like, but they already had enough. So now if I just fix their form, they should be able to sprint faster. Right. <laughs> like, no, that's well, not, not only how that, works. Health, kids, are, kids, kids who aren't injured tend to run faster. Injured, you true. know, injured kid. That, but so many coaches, you can get by with kids that age. Because you're talking about 18 to 22 year olds. Yeah. They're indestructible. And they just treat them as such. And so you have, you can have really bad coaching at that age that does okay because as if efforts there yeah kids will kids will hammer through it and still adapt because they're growing so much yeah you know hormonally they have more going on in their system at that point than any time they'll ever have in the rest of their life so their bodies sleep it recovers like at that point like just all they need is food and sleep <laughs> i don't even think someone gets sleep <sighs> that's a mistake yeah they not they're not that a lot of them here are like in med school and stuff like that. Oh, like they working at the hospitals, getting hours, stuff like that. So where was, where was that junior college Barton? That's in Kansas. Is it's, it far Kansas? Off, it's far off in, it's, it's near the wizard of Oz, wherever, wherever, <laughs> wherever Dorothy was from. <laughs> wherever right. Dorothy was from. So today, that's what it is. Cause they get now, tornadoes. Are they still, are they still like a big deal with, with track? Yeah, they're, they're still good. So they're still basically like anyone who's division one, but doesn't have the grades. Um, they head to Barton they're, for they're, a little bit. They're a Juco. Yeah. Right. So they yeah. go, they go there and then they get their grades together and then they come to a D one or wherever they want to go. Right. So it's, you just ends up with this whole squad of Juco like superstars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They end up getting even better yeah. with a good coach. Yep. Yep. Well, shoot. That's we're right over an hour. So. I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on and I will, I'll make my way to Kansas city soon. Yeah. Do I know that, next, I, yeah. Next week I'm tied up. Text me though. I'll help any way I can. But the week after that, I think I'm free. Okay. So one other thing with the high V arena, they're trying to put, they want to have like a world championship here indoor because oh, it's shit. big enough. So all you have to do is like, and where's it at? I think it's either New Mexico or Indianapolis. They have like a track that they tear down and they put back up and tear down. Okay. So they're trying to move it somewhere. And if they move it, they want to move it here in that stadium. But then again, another place would be the Royal Stadium because the Royals are moving. Is a Royal Stadium big enough? Like, how, is a baseball field big enough to have a track? Indoor, maybe? I don't know. Probably yeah, not. But then it's not indoor. But they can, I mean, I guess because it's historical too, you can't really tear it down. Nah, I don't Royals, think it's that the Royals, old. The Royal Stadium's not going anywhere. That thing's good looking. I know, but they could add more space, like open it up and then yeah, you we probably can have could. more stuff. Because it's yeah, being right there next to the Chiefs and then have like, if they built an outdoor track stadium there or something like that, and they can have an Olympics here, it would be perfect. Now, why why I do mean, you think track and field has never gotten the viewership or fan base? Like it does in Oregon, but like the rest of us, <laughs> like nobody goes to track meets, is it? Cause it's too long. Nobody want to sit long. at the tra- too, nobody want to sit at a track meet in the <laughs> hot weather. You can't take your own food. You don't. They don't no. have drinks yet. They, I think they're starting drinks. You can't take an umbrella. It's like, what do you do at a track meet all day long? Cause see, my parents running, loved it. But, but my parents loved doing. it. My, my parents <laughs> loved it because they were so used to going to watch my brother play football at A and M, and like that's a full day because it's like this breakfast shit with the team and then it was the game and then it was after and blah, 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 blah. Right. And so like they come to a track meet and like, I'm done throwing in, in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, cool. And then we could all leave. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they love yeah. that. The but track yeah, meet to, is two days, three days long. Like the Olympics is two weeks. Two weeks. Can you imagine how, how, the pain? And, and, and like, that's, that's another thing that people just don't understand is how little, the Olympics are set up for you to perform well. <laughs> you have to be on point, eating right, no stress, sleeping the perfect amount of time. <laughs> like, so with Beijing, like how early are you getting there to just be sorted out on sleep? What, as far as travel? Yeah. We were there two weeks early. Two weeks early. Yeah, we were there in 
oh, we had to go to base and then we'll go and have relay camp and stuff like that to get adjusted. Wow. Yeah. And which, like, uh, I literally. Which, which Olympics did you like more? Um, I liked Athens. Yeah. It was pretty. We got to do, a, I got to see a lot more because I only did one event. I guess I did two. I just didn't get to run. <laughs> But, you know, they dropped the baton. So, mm. but yeah, I got to, <laughs> I got dropped to the go. baton at the Olympics. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> um, <laughs> it wasn't me, you know, they switched me sure, out at the sure. last minute. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, actually I got to see, I got to sightsee. Yeah, I got to do a lot more. The parties was fun. You didn't have to be drunk to party there. It was just fun. Okay. You know? Um. I bet Olympic Village gets gets fun. It was crazy. Come on. <laughs> it was crazy. In Beijing, they had like a building that was just for games, like a game room. No and way. I remember going in there one time. We were playing pool, and these guys from another country, they were they had to be some type of fighter or wrestler because they had the color flyer ear. Yeah, they yeah. come in and they push all the balls off the table talking about move USA. I was like, USA. Usa, <laughs> you know, why are you pushing the balls? Move, give me the pool stick. And you know, they can barely speak English, but you know, weird. Just trying to force us to move. I was like, you don't, you do know in America, women don't put up with stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> I, he kind of came and grabbed my pool stick and he tried to take it and I just snatched it back and I swung it at him. <laughs> the Ain't other no was, shit other girl that was with me started running i was like you just gonna leave me here to fight all these fighters oh, no. like, just run away i got, I I got no then, speed knew, i'm out of here <laughs> i knew then that we couldn't be friends no more <laughs> oh no yeah it's, like they got banned from there like i got so many stories about the villages it was fun I bet. it was so fun it's so I fun bet, man she's cool. running around yeah dude I, I thank you again anywhere people listening can can follow you or any of those type of things Oh, uh, Instagram is the Mona Lee. Um, I think my Twitter is just Mona Lee. Okay. I don't even yeah. use Twitter. I get all my news from there really fast. I say you, I'm bad. My news, I get it all from Reddit. <laughs> no, if you Twitter, they be on it. Like people are retweeting stuff. They, it, well, it goes so fast. Because Reddit uses Twitter too. Like, so it sources from everywhere, but yeah. only good stuff gets upvoted enough right. to make it to the top. So you don't get bullshit a lot of the right. times. You get funny stuff, but... Yeah, so that's similar to Twitter because I like yeah. to read everybody's comments. The Oof. good and the bad is pretty funny. <laughs> there, there is plenty of both. Yeah. yeah so, I, don't, I just don't read comments for the most part. I, yeah, I got in the habit of not reading too much on my stuff, my post, if, especially if it's... Yeah, I, I want to talk about that. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm getting better at just not even paying attention. I just post a picture and keep going. It's the way to go. Contribute, don't consume. Yeah. Well, dude, thank thank you again. Thanks for coming on. And I'll head out that way for sure. Uh, all right. That's it. Go ahead right. and punch out. It's great talking to you. You too. And I'll see you soon. Thanks, Muna. Yes. All right. Bye. Quick thank you for Muna for coming on. And uh, thank you guys for listening as always. If you can, please help out our sponsors. Take care of them. Uh, they really do support the show and allow me a lot of freedom in who I talk to, what I talk about. And I want to keep that. I won't find anyone that's not going to allow us to, to who have whoever on the show and talk about whatever we want to. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, leave yourself, leave us a five-star review over on Apple iTunes. Help us uh, grow up, glow up that chart, as the kids are saying. And check out Hybrid Performance Method. Check out PowerDot. Check out Mind Bullet, Habit Coffee, Hate Brand Goods, and Eat Right Foods. Thank you guys for listening. Spread hate. Always party. Mm-hmm.